tonight. Revving up a love affair with a roadster. I don't know which one's my favorite Corvette. They all are. The Wheels of Fortune at Mid-America Motor Works. Plus, attracting the attention of drug companies and government agencies. I wanted to help get life-saving drugs to the patients that need them. And trying to pick the winners. Get up! Come on! Come on! Come on! A real long shot hits it big time at West Point Thoroughbreds. They're all part of this edition of How I Made My Millions. Good evening, I'm Tyler Mathis. The people you're about to meet started businesses born out of their personal desires or needs. Filling a market niche wasn't enough for them. They wanted something more meaningful. And in the process, they each built multi-million dollar companies. Mike Yeager thought nothing of traveling to car shows, just to be with other people who loved Corvettes. To help pay for his trip, he sold parts and accessories down the road, he found Wheels of Fortune. Mike Yeager and his pennant blue 1954 Corvette. There were only a few thousand made. A sign of success? Sure. And Mike Yeager likes to thank all the people who helped him along the road, every one of them. My high school typing teacher, had I not learned how to type, I wouldn't be in business today. She never figured him for this kind of success. Never in a million years. The youngest of nine children growing up in Southern Illinois, Mike took notice when his brother Frank, 10 years older, bought a two-year-old 1960 vet. I absolutely fell in love with the car. And I thought, boy, someday I'm going to own one of these things. Mike's first Corvette, a blue 67, cost him about $3,200. He was 20, working as a tool and die maker at $1.35 an hour. And even though his band could make up the 50 bucks a night, he was preoccupied with the Corvette. That was my first major purchase in life. And got this idea that I'd love to go to Corvette shows and you know maybe if I could find something to subsidize the cost of travel, uh, that would make life pretty great for me. Why do you suppose someone would drive hours to car shows in Dayton, Ohio, Memphis, or Dallas? Cars, women, uh, more cars, meet people. In 1974, Jaeger capitalized, literally. At a show in Bloomington, Illinois, he started selling Corvette patches, the kind you'd put on a jacket for 75 cents a piece. By one, two o'clock in the afternoon, I sold out of everything I took with me. And that was pretty exciting. That might have been the tip that I'm on to something. But I, I never really thought that I was in business. His trunk was his traveling warehouse, catalog with a one-page fly. The rock and roller even got a small loan to finance his hobby. It was a huge loan. It was $500. On a great day, he might take home two to $3,000. I was at the right place at the right time. I would like to think that I was a genius and had this all figured out, but not quite true. Born in 1953 and admired the world over, the Corvettes started on TV's Route 66 back in the 1960s and raced internationally. By 1976, this piece of Americana put Mike Yeager's former life in his rearview mirror. I said, okay, rock and roll, two on die maker, out the window, now I'm going to go in the Corvette business. And it was scary because I was the order taker I was the purchasing agent, I was a shipping agent, I was the receiving clerk, and I was the merchant and the catalog person. Five years in, he totaled more than $800,000 in sales. So he broke ground with his dad in 1979 on the headquarters of Mid-America Motor Works in Effingham, Illinois. Whether it was a jacket, a patch, an owner's manual, a mug with Corvette on it, it was a, they were available at different places. So I put them together into one package, so to speak. Once that started happening, then you would have people say, do you have, can you get? Thanks, call in American Motor Works. Today, the catalog with hundreds of pages offering about 80,000 items is the core of a multi-headed business generating sales of more than $30 million in its best years. We'll ship over 200,000 orders each year. Jaeger likes old Volkswagens too. He's got a couple of the real love bugs. Mid-America makes interiors for the Beetle. 
He's been hosting car shows since 1994. The first one featured about 300 Corvettes. Now, 17,000 cars, 45,000 people. Uh, they're all my friends. Jaeger dreams of building a racetrack for his Corvette-loving friends someday. And why not? He's already got a swimming pool shaped like a Chevy logo and an eye-popping collection of Corvettes at his museum called My Garage. You know, every car has a story. He's paid anywhere from $300 to almost $300,000 for Corvettes. I don't know which one's my favorite Corvette. They all are. I like cars that are unique, not just a Corvette, a spatial Corvette, cars that are stars, if you will. Well, we have styling cars, engineering cars, experimental cars, race cars. This was a show car created for the Detroit Auto Show in 1964 and also the New York World's Fair. This is a piece of jewelry to me. It ran at Le Mans, France in 1972. Built in 68, Jaeger paid about $56,000 for it in the early 90s, and he thinks it could be worth close to 900 grand today. The Le Mans car was a very, very significant car. Kevin McKay restored it for Jaeger at his shop outside New York City. McKay is just another of those folks Jaeger met at car shows. Mike started from nothing. He has a passion, he has the will, and uh, he just loves what he does. The XP819 car that we're doing now, it's one of a kind. XP819 is his latest Jaeger project. It's the first experimental rear engine Corvette. Damaged on a test track in the 1960s, it'll be unveiled in 2012. Now this is the last C4 Corvette. The last of the fourth generation Corvettes rolled off the assembly line in 1996. Everybody in the assembly plant signed it. Jaeger's two boys were impressed and now, like their dad, cars are more than a hobby. Both work in the auto business. There's a lot of things that kids can get hooked on. That's my mission in life, to get people excited, passionate about something. So that's why I share my cars. In the 1970s, there were only a few hundred thousand Corvettes in the United States. Now, they're about a million and a half.